What you think you know about Taiwanese could be completely wrong. The white lettering is Romanized Taiwanese. That just blew my mind. Hi everyone, I'm Tristan, aka Tsui Tsui Tsai. In two of my recent videos, I was joined by other creators to try to learn Taiwanese in sort of a fun and creative way. By now, you may have also seen the two cover videos I did of Long Time Go. Since then, I have learned a lot. A lot of that has been from reading the comments. Some of those comments have given me pronunciation tips. Some of them have pointed out mistakes in grammar. But by far the most helpful comment has been the comment that I feel like hundreds of people wrote, which is suggesting I check out the channel Ayong Daiki. I've heard many conflicting things about the history and use of Taiwanese, which is what prompted me to contact Ayo myself. I am incredibly grateful that he has agreed to shoot a video with me. So let's welcome Ayo! Welcome! Hey Tristan, hey Takeo, I'm Ayo. Hey, welcome to watch YouTube, huh? Ayo Takeo. If you don't know Ayo, you should know Ayo. He makes content specifically dedicated to teaching Taiwanese for both foreigners and local people alike. You should definitely check it out. Before we start, let me just ask you two questions. Think about your answers, and as you keep watching, the answer to both of these questions will be revealed. Where does the name Taiwan come from? What was Tainan previously called? They might seem like simple questions, but it's okay if you don't know the answer. You'll know in just a few minutes. Now back to our regular programming. Let's just jump right into the core content of today, which is misconceptions. I guess There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> What you think you know about Taiwanese could be completely wrong. Mm. Let's play a game okay. where I give you this. This is, yes, that's true. And yeah. this is, no, that's a misconception. So I'm going to say a sentence that I've heard multiple people tell me in Taiwan. Okay. And then you tell me whether or not that's true. What do I do if it's like half true? Like. Yeah. Okay. First, Taiwanese has no written language. That one is a big bang. We'll explain that in a minute. Okay. Second one yep. is Taiwan. Low. Uh, Taiwanese is like a very low class language, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bang. Big one. This seems hard to disprove, but you'll disprove it in a minute. And the third one, Taiyu is the wrong term for Minayu. Taiyu is the wrong term for Minayu. So you're saying that the correct term should be Minayu. Right. right. Ah, okay, yeah, then definitely. Oh, okay, I thought that would be half and half. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. Just, just wrong. <laughs> okay, so yeah. let's circle back to the first one. <laughs> okay. Where Taiwanese has no written language. A lot of people are unaware of the written language, right? Obviously, because most people don't know how to write. Taiwanese has like the most scripts of any language. Like, you're, you're saying it's not written? Actually, it's been written so many different ways by so many different people that nobody can figure it out. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the opposite problem. It definitely has written language. And that goes back at least like 400 plus years. Wow. So these characters have not just been used by Mandarin Chinese, obviously. They're used right. in Japanese as well. They've been used in Korean. Cantonese sort of mm -hmm. has had multiple iterations of systems. Yeah, Taiwanese is no exception to that. No exception. They also had characters that they were using. Uh, hundreds of years ago. Why do you think there's this misconception where people in Taiwan think that Taiwanese has no written language? It's a educational slash political thing where uh, the written language of Taiwanese was forced out during the martial law period. Books were burned and information was erased. So when they came to Taiwan or Formosa, one of the first things that they did was try to push Feng Yan out in favor of the Guoyu. Mm. So anything that was to do with not just Taiwanese, but Hakka or any of the other languages here was out. You can't do it, you can't write in it, you can't do it on TV. Everything has to be Mandarin. Mm -hmm. And that, that happened for about, I mean at least 37, but real, realistically more, more like 40 something years. The written language is kind of in these like parallel subcultures of writing in Taiwanese. One of them being using the, the kanji or the hanji, and another one that started very early on was using lomaji. So that's the romanization. Uh, yeah, just like this or, or like my shirt. So this is like legitimate written Taiwanese that's been used for 150 plus years. And then when the, when the Chinese Nationalist Party came, they said, that's no good. So this, this kind of writing was actually banned. 
they collected like books that were written in this script, uh, Bibles from the church. Uh, as I've heard stories that they would even like not send mail if it had this script written on it. It was very suppressive. You, you weren't allowed to see it. And so there was a whole generation or two of people who didn't see it. So it's, it's really no surprise I don't know about it. This next one. Um, Tai hello. <laughs> you know, I get comments on my videos sometimes. I got a comment the other day. It kind of pissed me off a little bit, but I read it. And I know the guy doesn't mean anything by it. I think it was some foreign guy, um, oh. at least based on his profile. But he said, I can taste the Bin Laden from here. And I, that's me speaking Taiwanese in a video. And this idea that Taiwanese is only used by, you know, Bin Lang chugging truck drivers down in Ping Dong is like, it's just false. Yeah. It's just absolutely false. But that is the story that has been portrayed in media since the arrival of the, of the Chinese nationalists. You told me something about the like one hour restricted time that they had during that period that just blew my mind. Yeah, for, so for broadcasting, the Gou Gi Hua, so that's in Mandarin Guo Yu Fa, the Deng Nia Hua, so that's the uh, Dian Ying Fa. They had laws for different, all different types of broadcasting. For TV and radio broadcasting, there were strict limits on how much Taiwanese could be aired and what things would be allowed to be aired in Taiwanese. There was an hour a day, and it wasn't like you could, you know, hear a lecture about physics in Taiwanese. They wouldn't have allowed that, mm. right? Anything that required high education or culture, that kind of stuff, that had to be in Mandarin. So the only roles that were allowed in the dramas in Taiwanese were the Beatle Not Chewing truck drivers. So that's where the impression comes from, but it's just wrong. This impression that people have now of Taiwanese speaking being spoken in that way, young people too, because young people have told me this before, is exactly what they wanted you to think. Yes, exactly. And that's they've succeeded. That, yeah, that's what I always find so disheartening about the whole thing is how successful they've been. Oh, and there are two good examples that you gave me of how Taiwanese in no way is a low class language. Yeah, so I'll give you like one example, right? There's this professor, uh, he's at Gaokong uh, Daya. He's a professor of rocket science. But this guy is super, super Taiwanese. He's also a freaking rocket scientist. <laughs> and he gives lectures in rocket science in Taiwanese. And Taiwanese has a space program now. If you look at that rocket, the white lettering is Romanized Taiwanese. So there's, so, yeah, the same script as this. So there's literally Taiwanese built by Taiwanese rocket scientists going into space with Taiwanese writing on it. And people are like, I oh, don't want to see that. Low that, class. Yeah, yeah, so low class. <laughs> So low class to build rockets and send them into space. Yeah. I bet he's chewing bin line when he's lecturing, that's what it is. Third misconception here is that Taiyu is the wrong term for Minayu and that it should be called Minayu. So there's a huge, huge, huge history here and there's going to be a lot of people who tell me that I'm wrong. I already know. If you're going to write a comment that I'm wrong on this one, just don't even bother. I've, <laughs> I've heard it all before, so I get it. There weren't really names for most of these languages for a long time because you don't really need a name for your language until you start interacting and trading with other people, right? Until, until that point, it's just like, we just talk, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody speaks the same way, and so you just talk, you don't need a name for it. When, when they finally started needing names for these things, what they tended to do in this area of the world was name them after the cities that they were in. Let's just say, for example, you live in a city called Taiwan, then your language would be called Taiwanese. The, the people who want to call it uh, Minnan, what they're doing is basically using sort of, let's say, academic linguistic classification. A group of all languages related in this way is called a language family. And they're saying, well, Taiwanese is very similar to these other XYZ languages, and we need a name for all of them that groups them together. Since they came from the southern part of Fujian province in present-day China, then we're going to call them Southern Fujian, aka Southern Min, aka Minnan or Banna. So it's a very academic way of looking at it. It's also not entirely accurate in my view, and it's not uh, realistic. Because the, the reality is that on the ground, people have been using the word Taiwanese in English, and most importantly, in Taiwanese. It's called mm -hmm. Taiwan Wei or Taigi, and that's been the case for hundreds of years. And if most people call it Taigi in Taigi, then it's Taigi, right? You, you mentioned Taiwan the city. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a city <laughs> called Taiwan? Basically, yeah, there was a city called Taiwan, and today the name of the city is called Tainan, or Dainan. 
When people talk about Taiwan, today they mean the entirety of the ROC. But for a long, long time, um, at least up until sort of the Japanese era, Taiwan was basically a city. There are approximately 7,000 languages that most reputable sources estimate are spoken globally, but only the top 100 are used. Languages around the world are dying and dying fast. The grimmest predictions of the future have 90% of the world's languages dying by the end of this century. Mm. Whether or not Dagi is on the list of <laughs> endangered languages, don't know. National Geographic has also quoted scholars saying that language loss could be culturally devastating because each language is a key that can unlock local knowledge about history, medicinal secrets, ecological wisdom, art, mythological histories, and I think most importantly, just culture. Yeah, language is sort of a cultural conduit. You can even think about this in, uh, in Dagi or in Mandarin. I think Japanese probably is the same, I'm guessing. But think about their word for culture. It's bun hua. It's becoming written, right? Becoming becoming written down is culture. If we let Taiwanese die, then we would lose a lot of all of what I just mentioned. That especially includes history and art and culture. And I assume that most people don't want that to happen. I think it's one of those things where people say, "Well, of course I don't want that to happen. I care about Taiwanese." But then they spend their whole lives not speaking Taiwanese, not learning to read and write Taiwanese, and using Mandarin everywhere or English. It's easier said than done. It all takes time and everybody's short on time. Um, I totally get that. On the other hand though, we have to realize that, you know, language loss occurs generationally. For example, a lot of our listeners today, probably their parents still speak really good Taiwanese. Probably. And they probably, even many of them, spoke to their children, our viewers, in Taiwanese. But if you guys aren't speaking Taiwanese with your kids, then they're only going to hear it from grandma and grandpa. True language death happens when communities switch to other languages and parents stop raising their children to speak their old ones. Their kids, well, they're not going to hear it from you because you're not speaking it. No. It disappears one sort of generation at a time. And rather quickly. And quickly, yeah. It's basically, yeah. You, can, you can just do the math, right? It's three, four generations yeah. to being gone, and we're essentially two generations in now. When the last elderly speaker dies, the language is unlikely ever to be spoken fluently again. You mentioned how it's hard to actually do it, um, which is why I think it's really important to say that you have done an amazing job collecting the resources that people can access. A lot of them are free, a lot of them are online, a lot of them are on Ayodaiki's channel. <laughs> I'll put links in the description below. There is a link specifically that has a ton of links and information within with that he put together um, that will tell you where you can find resources to learn. I've been able to find a very few number of resources where I think the quality is really up to par and those are what I put on that um, on that list of links. For somebody who is... Uh, what would you suggest? A friend of mine, his name is Ahua Sai, you might have seen his videos. Go watch his stuff. We have a series called Yang Dai Express. Express, your one-stop shop for Taiwanese and English language exchange. And the other thing that's super important is you have to learn how to write. Mm -hmm. It's if you're an adult, if you're over the age of two, <laughs> it's really hard to learn a language without writing. So you have to get literate, and the easiest way to do that is with um, with the romanization script. What, what happens a lot of times is because people are really used to reading the Chinese characters, mm -hmm. they think, oh, it'll be so much easier if I can use Chinese characters. Mm. I need this sign again. Oh. That's another misconception. <laughs> the Chinese characters work if you have the, the Taiwanese mindset. But if you're missing the sounds, if you're missing the grammar, if you're missing all of these th parts of the language, then you gotta do it with the romanization. So, learn the script. Once again, Please check out Ion Daiki's channel. Um, There's a link down there, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Also, check out the other links in the description, which will tell you how you can just get better at Taiwanese. And I hope that I'll see you in the next video. Okay, thank you. All right, Bye. <laughs>